Hi, I'm Dr. Rashmi Yogesh, Consultant Fertility Specialist, Kushi Fertility and IVF Center, Bengaluru, Karnataka. Endometrial polyps. Endometrial polyps are extra growths inside the uterine cavity. The polyps can range from 0.5 cm to even 3 or 4 cm. These polyps can just be an extra growth in the lining and could be without a pedicle or sometimes they could have a long strand which is called as a pedicle. Pedunculated polyps are easier to be removed and sometimes they can even come out during periods with uterine contractions. But however, the polyps that are not pedunculated are the ones which they have broad base and these have to be removed either with hysteroscopy or with a blunt cure attach. We prefer doing a hysteroscopy guided endometrial polypectomy rather than doing a blind endometrial cure attach because we have seen that blind endometrial cure attach can sometimes damage the basal layer of the endometrium and prevent further endometrial proliferation and because of the blind endometrial cure attach the endometrial layer can thin out and further pregnancy chances can deteriorate. In endometrial polypectomies, we ensure that we do a hysteroscopy guided resection with either resectoscope or with scissors and sometimes they can just be pulled out with hysteroscopic blunt forceps. The hysteroscopic procedures are much preferred than a blind endometrial curettage in handling polyps. The polyps can be very well detected in a normal ultrasound scan. The transvaginal ultrasound scans, two-dimensional ones, are better than the transabdominal scans. In the transvaginal scan, if we see an endometrial polyp, we look for the vascularity of the polyp and try to understand whether these polyps are arising from the anterior or the posterior wall of the uterus and accordingly, we are prepared to get them removed when we are doing a pipple biopsy, a curettage or a hysteroscopic polypectomy. In endometrial polyps, the polyps are those which will prevent implantation from occurring because they act like space occupying lesions inside the uterus. Sometimes these endometrial polyps can develop extra layers of the endometrial tissue and can result in either premenstrual or intermenstrual bleeding. Women complain of irregular spotting in between the periods or after the periods or just before the onset of periods because of the polyps there within them. These polyps can sometimes cause uterine contractions and excessive pain during menstrual cycle. Whenever it comes to dealing with a woman who wants to conceive, whenever there are endometrial polyps, we decide on removing them before we do the embryo transfer or an intrauterine insemination for that matter. In women with high levels of endogenous estrogen, the endometrial layer could be too thick and polypoidal. Instead of one or two polyps, the entire endometrium could be thick and would have multiple polyps because of which we call it as a polypoidal endometrium. In such cases, the endometrium should be curated with a suction curettage, after which high dose progesterone therapy should be given for a couple of months. Sometimes the GnRH agonist depot injections have to be given so as to ensure that the excessive estrogen influence on the uterine endometrium is countered and then the endometrium prepared for implantation which could be either a hormone replacement therapy with low dose estrogens for frozen embryo transfers or it could be with medications like clomiphene citrate or letrozole so as to make sure the endometrium proliferates and, and at the same time ovulation also occurs. However, tamoxifen should be avoided in such women because tamoxifen is known to increase the occurrence of endometrial polyps. Some women have a tendency to form endometrial polyps and in such women, one should look for the occurrence of endometrial polyp on a regular basis. On the second or third day of the menstrual cycle, these polyps wouldn't be visible on scan but during the proliferative phase that is between the day 10 to day 14 or 15 of the cycle when the endometrium becomes triple lined it is during this time the endometrial polyps are much easily visible and that is the reason why women who have a history of endometrial polyps can go for regular screening with a transvaginal scan during the 
proliferative phase between the day 10 to day 14 of the cycle on a regular basis say once in 3 or 6 months to ensure that they don't have another endometrial polyp propping up. As a result of the endometrial polyps, some women do have symptoms like intermenstrual spotting or even premenstrual spotting, but there are women who have polyps inside and still don't have any symptoms.